Welcome everyone to Half History Will Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and as I was putting together some lecture material, I ran across a primary source from Puritan, Massachusetts, about a 1641 court case that I wanted to share with you all. To give a little background, Puritans located in England believed that the Anglican Church was too corrupt and too much like the Catholic Church. Some Puritans wanted to change the Anglican Church, or England itself. And then there was a separatist group, who believed they needed to create their own society and colony that revolved around the teachings of the Bible. They essentially wanted a theocracy, where religion and government were intimately intertwined with one another. Therefore, the Bible was the supreme law of the land. Those separatist Puritans first moved to the Netherlands, which was a religiously tolerant place, meaning they could practice their own type of Christianity, but after a little while in this new area, they found that their children were becoming influenced by other religions and customs found there. This horrified the Puritans and set them on the course to travel to North America, where they could create their own society where themselves and their children wouldn't be influenced by other cultures or religions. They were seeking religious freedom, not religious toleration, because they were not tolerant of other religions or its impact on fellow Puritans. Now, once the Mayflower brought them to the American Northeast, they went about setting up that society or a city upon a hill. However, they found that worldly and carnal natures were slipping into their colony. One of those people was Mary Latham, an 18-year-old woman who had married one of the first men to show interest, who in comparison was a much older man. Mary, being young, was not content being tied down to a man who the governor of the Massachusetts colony called an ancient man who had neither honesty nor ability, and one whom she had no affection unto. Therefore, she liked to party and get drunk with men her own age, and that is where her troubles began. One of the gentlemen she had relations with, named James Britton, was stricken with a horrible illness, and thinking himself on his deathbed, and believing that the illness was a punishment from God, confessed to sleeping with Mary. Other partygoers witnessed the act by testifying that, in the evening of a day of humiliation through the country for England, a company met at Britain's, and there continued drinking till late in the night, and then Britain and the woman were seen upon the ground together, a little from the house. The court found Mary and James guilty of adultery, but before the trial was over, Mary accused twelve others, wherefore two were married men. Five of these were apprehended and committed, the rest were gone, but denying it, and there being no other witness against them than the testimony of a condemned person, there could be no proceedings against them. To summarize, James was not the only man Mary was said to have had relations with. She named twelve others. However, only five remained in the colony at the time of the trial, and the five that were still there were not put on trial because there were no witnesses other than Mary because all the men denied having any contact with her. Let's go to the diary of the governor of the Massachusetts colony, John Winthrop, to find out what happened to James and Mary. The woman proved very penitent, and had deep apprehensions of the foulness of her sin, and at length attained to hope of pardon by the blood of Christ, and was willing to die in satisfaction to justice. The man also was very much cast down for his sins, but was loath to die, and petitioned the general court for his life, but they would not grant it. They were both executed. They both died very penitently, especially the woman, who had some comfortable hope of pardon of her sin, and gave good exhortation to all young maids to be obedient to their parents and to take heed of evil company. Here we have a great example of how the government of the early Massachusetts colony ran and how people within the society was expected to act. The first Puritans were desiring a city upon a hill, but human nature made its way into Puritan life. The governing body attempted to stop its infiltration by instituting biblical laws and sentencing. We would see the colony convict many so-called witches in the Salem witch trials many years later. The Puritans believed in the laws and sentences as prescribed in the books of Leviticus and Deuteronomy, and when one looks into the court records, can find them citing those biblical scriptures as the reason for capital punishment. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helps you understand early Puritan life in North America. Remember to subscribe if you want to be notified when a new video is uploaded. I'll see you next time.